what's up guys, David one two two, and it's list day! Ah yes, it's list day, and as always we're continuing my interesting series of looking at all the best cards in all the main sets of the game. And the next set we are looking at today is Enemy of Justice, and uh, there's some really cool like legendary hero cards in this set, so I got my buddy Jason to help us out, because he, he plays hero, he's a hero, he's a hero fanboy. Get married! First of all, there's nothing but hero fanboys, all right? Everybody else sucks. <laughs> you either hate him or you, <laughs> you, him. you gotta love him, all right? <laughs> and uh, as always, we're just gonna go through this list and uh, we're gonna do our very best to, you don't have to sidle out of this <laughs> shot. As always, we're basically gonna just look at this list as objectively as possible and try to look at the cards in the light of the time when they came out. However, we can no longer, I'm wearing a green hoodie. <laughs> yeah. As always, we're gonna look at the fuck. As always, we're going to try to be objective with the set and uh, try to think about the cards when the, in the context of when they came out because we can no longer really look at the set just as the set because the, now if we have archetypes, it kind of ruins it because then you get cards like, for instance, uh, there's a card in this set that searches a very particular type of monster, but it doesn't have like all of its best targets, so is it good because it doesn't have a target? No, that's a stupid argument. It's a good card, so we can't do that anymore. But anyway, let's get started with number 10. Jason, do you want to kick us off? Oh, you know I am. All right, let's do it. So number 10 on the list is Swift Birdman Joe. Now, I think this card is a bit more controversial due to the fact that it's a giant true nade, which is awesome. The bad part is it takes one tribute. Now with a 2300 attack, it's not the biggest beater, but it can stay on the field for a little while and definitely help you punch through more things. The next one for number nine is Life Equalizer. Like Evil Keeper Jerbers is a trap card that when your life points are 8,000 different than use opponents, you can make both of your life points 3,000. Now, why would this ridiculous card be on this list? Because on its own, it does literally nothing. It's, it's kind of a bogus card. It's like, <laughs> if you're winning by that much, why would you play it? And if you're losing by that much, I, I guess it kind of like gives you 2,000 life points back. Yay! But no, but no, that 3,000 life point magical number of modulating your opponent's life points to that sets them up for the old OTK. Things like Magical Explosion and Bad Reaction to Smoji with Gift Card really like your opponent being in that 3k range, so this card allows you to do some gimmicky like back row OTKs, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of the reasons why Magical Explosion is still in the limited list at 1. Again, on its own, it doesn't do too much and it's actually quite hard to activate, however, in a deck that's built around it, it's super gimmicky and trolly. I've played... I've played this card before. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why. And I made no friends at locals. Yeah. <laughs> what we have? Karibo. Karibo was the first hand <laughs> trap. So number eight on our list is the Herald of Green Light, which I think they would agree with me if we can put both in the same spot, we'd use this and purple. But if you had to pick one to be better, it will definitely be green. And its green effect is when your opponent activates a spell card, you discard this and another fairy type monster in order to negate the activation effect of the card to destroy it. Now, this is completely awesome because at the time we only had one other really, really bad hand trap in the game, which was only made famous because a certain individual would use it to save his Ross. Yeah, it's really cool that, you know, we, we finally have hand traps. It might be a neg one, but it still negates power spells, which were important. Of course. Time. What? You want to regek me? You know you don't. Yeah, I'll take a I'll take a <laughs> Number seven is Celestial Transformation. I don't know why I'm doing voice. Why are you voice. talking like that? That's I don't know why I'm doing voice. Accent. I'm not even doing voice. I don't know why I'm doing that. Celestial Transformation is a quick play spell that lets you special summon one fairy monster from your hand. Its attack is halved and it is destroyed during the end phase. Why is this card good? Well, as a spell, quick play is always great because at the very worst, you can always set it like a trap and you can get a monster out of your hand and block something for some chump damage or whatever. Another thing is it doesn't matter the level of the light monster that you bring out either. I know that. <laughs> 
just made me mad. Which means, you, <laughs> fuck you. Which means, like, on your opponent's turn, you could drop a Christie on their field. Sure, they're going to have its attack, but maybe the fact that it's knocking out special summons means that for at least that turn until their end phase, they can't actually do nothing. And then on your turn, it allows you to cheese a monster out of your hand, something that you might need for maybe some Tribute Vodder at this time, or even in the future. Now we have like things like Synchro, Exceeds, and Links, and this is just another free monster on board. Overall, it's a pretty solid little card, and it does find its way into Fairy decks here or there. All right, so number six is actually uh, Destiny Hero Diamond Dude. Did you forget the name of Diamond Dude? Of course I did. <laughs> Diamond Dude had a great tool ability, which allowed him to excavate the top card from your deck. Now, if it was a normal spell card, the following main phase of your turn, you're allowed to activate that card from the graveyard, even if Diamond Dude himself is no longer on the field. Besides excavating the card and then using it, you bypass all cost that you need to actually pay for it. So let's say if you have something that requires you to play life points, don't need it. And discards come cards from your hand, don't need to do it. A lot of people use it in tantrum with the, uh, well, it hasn't come out at this time, but they use it in uh, with that rainbow, uh, with the rainbow beast uh, spell card. Oh, I, I don't know, that's your deck. I don't, know. I don't use ray, okay, you know what? <laughs> oh, you mean crystal, I, not crystal beast? It is Crystal Beast, but it's the spell card that allows you to send all other cards from the field by getting rid of four oh, cards. Oh, right, 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 yeah, okay. So, and you could also use it, what was the card that came out at the time? The one that nuked the field by discarding five cards. Oh, uh, it's not Final Destination, is it? Final Destiny or something like that? I think it's Final Destiny. Yeah, Point I, I is, you don't have to pay the cost in order to activate the cards that you literally excavated from the top of your deck. Get that Royal Tribute <laughs> without Necro. Oh, oh there you go, Royal <laughs> Tribute. Just bypass that. What? Who needs a Necro Valley? <laughs> not this guy. Bountiful Boobies. Nasty. Bountiful Artemis. <laughs> Bountiful Artemis is uh, the Stop it. post what? Stop it. <laughs> that <laughs> wasn't <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> Bountiful Artemis. Bountiful Artemis is the poster child for the Counter Fairy deck. Counter Fairies is an old deck that still somehow manages to be around because every once in a while it gets trickles of support. It actually recently, what, in the last year, got a starter deck, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This card has a really interesting continuous ability. When a counter trap is done resolving, you get to draw a card, which is interesting because counter traps do inherently put you down one card, whether or not they're negating or destroying or whatever doing is the, that's the card economy. But Inherently, you are losing one card regardless of what's happening, so this lets you recur that because in back row decks, eventually when all of your back row is burned, you have a hard time recruiting that back row back to the field. As a light level 4 fairy, the typing is great, and it's 1600 attack, it's big enough to be annoying, it can be a threat, and honest is always an option. And in this corner we have Jason, the whole player, and he's gonna talk about a hero card. Rota with... 2, electric boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can you just feel the hate? I just, uh... <laughs> All right, so the number four spot belongs to Emergency Call. I almost jacked that it's up. It's E-Emergency Call. E-Emergency Call because you got to specify nowadays. Emergency Call has a very good effect. Like you said, it's Road Up 2.0, but it's especially great for hero cards. Well, when you activate the card, you take any e-hero from your deck and add it to your hand. That's but it. That's it. It's what else do you want to do? It's not once per turn. It's not limited. It's not once per turn. It's only form-fitted for hero decks. And at this time, ain't no deck alive receives so much support like a hero deck. <laughs> so searching, is always a great option. Anyone who tells you otherwise plays bad Yugi all the time. And he knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> Next up is Icarus Attack. Ah ha. See, this is one of my favorite cards in the set. I wish I could go higher, but the rules of my set were putting limited and forbidden cards at the top means that he got bumped down the list. However, <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> and as a veteran Harpy player, this thing is one of my favorite tools in the old back row toolbox. What does it do? Tribute one wing beast monster on your side of the field to destroy two cards your opponent controls. Doesn't say face up, doesn't say face down, doesn't say spells, traps, or monsters, just two cards that they got. Now, you know, if you look at the card economy of the card, it's not that great. It's a two for two. However, with something like Twin Twisters has 
proven time and time again, one card that destroys two, even if it costs an extra card, is more valuable than ever having like two cards that are both one for ones. Two MSTs are the same card advantage as one Icarus attack, however, the likelihood of having both MSTs in your hand is very low. So having your Icarus attack be able to hit two cards at the expense of losing a monster is no big deal because it is super disruptive and nukes two cards off your opponent's field, thus stopping their play. Making it an inherently awesome card that we've seen retrains and reuses and, and changes on a theme over and over again from Burning Abyss to, like I said, Twin Twisters and that other trap car, what is it called? Heavy Storm Duster, ah! <laughs> Overall, it's just a really solid trap card for all of your Wing Beast decks. The number two spot on our list is a card that I really wish wasn't on the limited list, but I understand what it is, Dimensional Fissure. Dimensional Fissure is very simple. It's a continuous trap. It's a continuous. <laughs> I want that number one spot. Dimensional Fissure is a continuous spell card that reads while face up on the field, any monster sent to the graveyard is instead banished. Now, it being limited, obviously it has to get a high spot because of the rules that somebody else made. <laughs> I can't, I can't front. It is a great card. It needs to be at least two or higher. All right, so for this list, we have two honorable mentions. I'll start off with the first one, which is Banisher of Radiance. Woo! Now, Banisher of Radiance is good because it is a standing Marco Cosmos. Marco but, Cosmos? Did I say it wrong? You said Marco Cosmos. <laughs> what the hell's Marco? Polo. Polo. <laughs> Banisher of Radiance is good because it's a standing Macrocosmos. Polo. <laughs> now, it's a level 3 monster with a 1600 attack, which is not terrible for an actual level 3 light monster, but it can be easily outed so we can really fit it on the list that good. And our second honorable mention is the counter trap, Force Back. Force Back naturally means when your opponent normal summons or flips on the monster, eject the monster right back to their hand. It's, it's no cost required, very basic. Now, normally you eject the monster for a normal summon at this day in age in Yugi, it was actually far more effective then. And if they actually tribute summon using monsters of the field, having them bring the card right back, well, you just probably made them make three. So, good job. <laughs> oh my God, we got a dishonorable mention and the hero hater in me He's so happy about this. It's a bad card. Bunch of haters! It's a bad card. Hero Flash! <laughs> this is such an anime card. It's ridiculous. This is the something this is the thing that Jaden would pull off his booty late in a duel just to like punch some asshole in the face with Elemental Hero Neos. <laughs> But anyway, Hero Flash says if you got all the, the, the letter hero spells H, E, R, and O in your graveyard, you can banish all those guys to special summon one normal E-Hero monster from your deck, and then all your normal E-Hero monsters this turn can attack directly. Presumably, you're summoning Neos and punching for 2,500 attack. <laughs> Plus Burstrinix <Yeah>. and... <laughs> it's right. It's right. <laughs> The problem obviously with this card is you need to have four very specific spell cards in your graveyard to even activate this thing, all of which are effectively unsearchable, especially at this point. And if you have, let's say, two E's and O but no R, you, you, you can't it's do dead. it. It's, dead. it's, it's dead. dead. It's dead. And then for the payoff to summon a big normal beater really isn't the, the biggest payoff. It's, it's, it's basically a, a schmancy, unexpected die, <laughs> so... <laughs> And if you really have a whole field of normal monsters where you can actually do an OTK, then you're we're clearly in a winning position as it is. Because you already activated all these spells this whole duel. I don't know how you haven't won yet. But the card is completely ridiculous. It, it's way too hard to pull off for the, the, the weak payoff of the card. However, it's clearly an anime card. It's supposed to be for that wombo combo. Bam boy! <laughs> Fuck you, it's bad. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm just going to take a quick break here right before we get to number one, just to plug our sponsor for today's video, Meta Mats. If you want a play mat that's got that spell ground cloth mat feel, but also has a, that own custom touch, Meta Mats is the number one place to go for that. I absolutely love them. They help me with my tournaments, and just overall, their quality is really fun, and they're just really cool guys. I like to support them. If you want to support them, too, you can use the code troll the meta as here on the screen. It'll get you, like, I don't know, I think it's like 10% off a purchase, and uh, you'll help the channel out. You'll help them out. Everyone is happy and anyway here we go number one 
And the number one card is Marco Cosmos. <laughs> Macrocosmos is a continuous trap card that reads any card that is sent to the graveyard is banished instead and then the uh, part of the effect that nobody remembers I don't remember what it is It allows you to special <laughs> summon that the Primordial Sun from your deck Helios the Primordial Sun It lets you special summon Helios the Primordial Sun from your deck That never happens The reason why this card is number one and Dimensional Fissure isn't even though Dimensional Fissure is a little faster, it's a spell, you can just slap it, and it can't be negated by Solemn Warning, strangely enough. The fact that it banishes everything, including spells and traps, means it does have a little bit more of a punch, it's a little bit more of a floodgate, and being a trap, this is the kind of thing you flip on your opponent's turn anyway, and uh, so overall I just think it's, it's, it's better than Dim Fissure. However, it's really split in hairs. But anyway, guys, that was Enema of Justice. <laughs> damn it. I God can't. damn it, you just couldn't help yourself, could you? You know what? Get your own shot. <laughs> ah! <laughs> You're an enema of I accosted the man. Hold on. <laughs> enemy of Justice, all right? Now, say what you will about this era. There was a lot of testing going on. So, you got some good cards, you got some bad cards. More bad than good. But overall, this set was actually pretty good considering how bad the last ones were. Oh, Jeebus. Uh. <laughs> There's cards in this set that you still see plays. That's like. Oh, that's actually very good. Yeah. So, I'm going to sign off for you. Remember, if you can't troll the meta, who will? Obviously not me, but... <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Marco Polo. <laughs> you are now under the control of my Millennium Rod. You will subscribe to the channel, or watch the latest vid. And if not, you could, you could watch whatever the f*** this is. <laughs>